it's Ashley. So, if you've been on the channel before, you should maybe probably not know that we have three people here working at Ash Cause Productions, as if this is an actual corporation. <laughs> so we have Elise Kalis, Sophie Gogolis Daneman, and Ashley Kozlowski. Now, we all have our separate roles, we all do our own thing. Um, Sophie's basically a producer and cinematographer. I am basically everything. I'm producer, writer, actress, director. Not much of a cinematographer, actually, so I guess I'm not everything. And Elise is a producer, writer, and actress. So Elise has kind of been messing around a little with, like, comedy and stuff, and she's written her own, like, comedy um, sh skit type thing for, like, stand-up comedy. And she had a talent show tonight, and she decided to do it. Now, this is her first time ever performing comedy in front of a crowd, and I recorded it. And the quality is not amazing because I don't have an amazing camera. It's a really simple camera. So, I recorded it anyway, and I wanted to, like, share it with you guys, you know, so you could show her a little love. Because it's Elise, you know? Who can't love Elise? <laughs> so, here is Elise's, um, stand-up comedy thing. Yeah, I think she did pretty good for her first time. It's only about six minutes long, so. Bye! Now for more fun things! Okay. Jada, I tell you, all this dancing is, uh, it's really wearing me out. I've been working on a lot and doing all kinds of things. I'm tired too. Wow, that's, that's way more impressive. Okay, well, you know what? I'll stand up and you sit down. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll sit down and you sit down. Okay. Wait, no, that's the same thing. Alright, enough of the nonsense. Here is Elise Collins with her stand-up comedy. I stand up, you sit down. I'll warn you though, it might be kind of hard to follow us. Just kidding. Here's Elise. talking to my aunt, so she's not really paying attention because it's a lot of looking. You can't really look away in a sign language or in a conversation with sign language or you miss half of the conversation. So she's walking and she's like, why is my shoe wet? And she like looks behind her, she looks under the cart, she's like, what? And she looks under my seat and I pee through the stroller. <laughs> walking down the Mall of America with pee dripping through the stroller. And she's pushing me and she's like, there's pee in my shoe. <laughs> so we had to go to a bathroom and she had to clean me up and clean her shoe. And my aunt thought it was the funniest thing. And if you've never heard a deaf person laugh, it is one of the greatest experiences in your life because they do laugh. And it's like 100% natural if you think about it, like as teenagers. We sit there and we'll laugh, but we modify it. Because we're like, I sound really weird when I laugh. What am I doing? Everyone else laughs really cool, and I'm kind of weird. So we kind of change, and it's great. But being a teenager, we get a lot of advice from our parents. <laughs> and I think that's fantastic, but sometimes it's annoying. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to microwave food. Food is like the gold to teenagers, or at least to me. We don't do sit-down dinners, so it's like, Oh my gosh, a TV dinner. I have a microwave. <laughs> well, if it's a bowl of soup, you stick it in the microwave, you microwave it for two minutes or however long. And if you're like being caught lazy by your parents, you just happen to be lucky. And they'll be like, why don't you get some hot pads to pull that out or put a plate under it? And I'm like, no, I can handle this. I have it. I've got it. We're good. And I just have to go around the microwave door and put it on the counter. So you're like, it's fine, it's only two minutes, it's not that hot, right? You grab it, and about 0.2 seconds in, you're halfway around the door, 
you're like, this was a bad idea. <laughs> and suddenly you like hear in your head this little voice going, ah! as you try to like quickly move it around the table without like spilling or anything. And your mom can see it on your face. She's like, wouldn't that have been easier if you had a plate or a hot pad? And she's like, no, because I proved a point. I'm strong. I have this. But my parents tend to be wrong when it comes to advice on like friends or social problems. Maybe it's because they're a little bit older than me. Maybe it's just because we have different opinions. It seems like every time I go up to them and they're like, how was your day? And I'm like, oh, you know what's good, except for my friend, she's having boy problems. And they're like, oh, what kind of thing? And I'll explain the entire situation, pour my heart out. And suddenly my mom's like, he just wants to explain his feelings. He's just trying to get to her and explain it. And I'm like, mom. I'm a teenager. I don't want an answer. I want to complain. Can you give me that? That's all I want as a teenager. But sometimes the advice is great, and I take it, and it's no problem. But back to food, because I personally love food. It's the gold of teenagers. Um, I realized that when your parents bring home, like, take out Chinese or take out food from work or something, we suddenly become like lap dogs. We're like really excited. We're like, there's food, and I didn't have to make it, and it's delicious. So if we were like actual little lap dogs, and our parents sat food down, we'd be up in their face licking it rapidly, and then we'd be like, bye food. <laughs> so food is fantastic. And have you ever noticed, like if you go to restaurants, suddenly bread is amazing. <laughs> They go and they're like, you can have like breadsticks and super salad or whatever. And you're sitting there and you're like, what is this made out of? Oh my gosh. And you just, at one point you're like, you know what, yeah, can you cancel my entree and just give me more breadsticks? Because these are great. And even like Red Lobster, they have like cheesy things. Or like Texas Roadhouse, they have those buttery that are sweet. Those are my favorite. But no one wants to share. They're all like, oh no, you, you have food coming, right? Yeah, I'll just take the bread. It's never fair. <laughs> but I've noticed as I've gone through high school, or gone through as much, as, a bit, as much of it as I have, vegetables have become a little unpopular. I used to be fine with them. I was like, broccoli's my favorite. Carrots are fine. I really like cucumbers. But my parents will sit there and they're like, what did you eat today? And I'm like, Doritos, <laughs> Coke, and they're like, you know that's not good for you, and I'm like, yeah, I'm a teenager, all I need to do is bounce and walk around like a zombie because I'm not sleeping up there a lot. <laughs> so sometimes, my parents are like, you need to turn up, I mean, eat a turn up. You do not need to jump around, just eat your vegetables, and I get annoyed. But I think a really great thing in life is orchestra. And although violas take a lot of heat, I really appreciated the earlier cello jokes. Those were fantastic. Yeah, those are my favorite. I appreciate those. Take some heat off the violas, and then they were brought back. And that's basically my life. So I think I'm done.